Hello and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a Common Room Radio production. I'm Liz Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive. Daphne Olive, who actually crossed half a continent to come and do this podcast with me. For the love of Liz and Black Sails. Uh, and Black Sails especially, <laughs> I think, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So it took some time because, and you know what? It really didn't even take that much time. It did not take we much time. We started talking about this because I had watched some Outlander and I was really, really trying to be into Outlander. Yes, you were. And I could not do it. Even for the love of Daphne, which is a pretty big love, <laughs> I could not get into Outlander. And honestly, I had forgotten about this other show that Stars had done because I didn't have Stars anyway. And I remembered vaguely seeing trailers for Black Sails when it first came out and thinking, tall ships, I am into this. It's going to be awesome. And then it said, produced by Michael Bay. I was like, nope, I'm out. This is not what I'm going to be going into this thing for. That was exactly <laughs> my reaction. Yeah. <laughs> So how long did it take you to actually start watching the show? How long was it airing? Um, I think I started watching it when season two had already started. Um, oh, okay. I was watching Outlander because yes. I am a fan. You are. And, um, and more power to you. And to be honest, we have to credit Outlander essentially for us even meeting because that's how I ended up. Yeah. That's how I ended up listening to Story Wonk and that's yes. how we met. Oh, um, so my husband just kept saying, you need to watch the show. You need to watch the show. And I said... Okay, I'm watching Outlander, but I'm not really sure that your average star show is really yeah. my cup of tea. And then I saw Michael Bay and I said, <laughs> no. And he just kept saying, you have to try this. Seriously, yeah. I promise you, this is your kind of show. And so I did. Mm -hmm. And I think it really only took pretty much like somewhere in the middle of the first episode for me to really? realize I adore it. Middle of the first episode. Yeah, I mean, the first episode isn't what the show becomes. That's my main right. my main criticism for episode one. Is right. Not that it, even that it's necessarily bad. I don't even think that it's bad. No. Just that it's not very indicative of what the show becomes. No, I mean, I think that, I mean, I feel, if I'm being perfectly honest about it, I mm -hmm. feel like, you know, if you look at the shows that Stars was doing up until then. Yes. Um, which, you know, the one I can think of off the top of my head is Spartacus. Yeah. Um, I feel like. They were definitely trying to, like, ease people into the show it was mm -hmm. going to become. Like, it had more of a typical stars pre-Black Sails feeling to right. it. Right. Which is to say... The, you, you lots could say, of violence. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and well, some nudity. I think what we had said before, you know, and, and just, just for the sake of, of just being completely open about where we were going into this show and where we are now, I think is that it was kind of associated with some pretty smutty TV. And yeah. it's like, there's not a lot of story. It's just kind of, it's almost pay-per-view. It's just not... Blood and boobs. Yeah. Blood and boobs is exactly... <laughs> yeah. I, I was say. like, so now we've got blood and boobs and boats. And yep. I don't think I'm going to be into the show and that's all right. Yeah. For me, the thing in, see, in the first episode that sold me was honestly Flint. And he is that so con good. continues to be for me, yeah. you know, really the core of the show. Pretty much his presence from the first moment was incredible. Mm. And and then you do you get I mean, there's now rewatching episode one, I see how much there is in it that mm -hmm. that will that will reverberate throughout the whole yes. three seasons that we've seen up until now. But they tell a pretty good story in the first episode. A lot happens and it's really you know? interesting. That is very true. There's there's a lot that happens, and you. I, I realized um, going back and rewatching just how much you learned about the politics of piracy yep. in that first episode, which is really important, and how much of it's. I, I mean, they painted at first as though it were uh, a perfect democracy, really, right. and it's very interesting because that's the last thing that you think of. And I was so surprised because, of course, um, Captain Flint. And uh, pe people who, for me, have watched Muppet Treasure Island, or, you know, if you read the classics, whatever <laughs> your thing is. But <laughs> most people are going to know Captain Flint and Long John Silver. And everybody knows Long John Silver, if nothing else, just because it's a restaurant chain, right? Like pirates. Right. Yeah, the ocean. Peg leg. Gotcha. Exactly. But Captain Flint is less known unless you really know the story of Treasure Island. But this is that backstory of how this most feared captain and, and most feared pirate of the Caribbean, I guess, at the time, was who uh, Silver and Billy Bones sailed under. And he's just, I mean, he just darkens the pages of Treasure Island. He's yep. just like this specter that haunts all these people, even though we learn... 
um, early on in Treasure Island that he's long dead, but still he's spoken of with this like this reverence and and uh, fear that, that is still instilled in the hearts of these men. So I was really surprised that when we first meet Flint, it's at a really weak point yes. in his career. That really surprised me from a writer's standpoint. Yeah. I mean, we'll get into that more when we're talking about episode mm-hmm. one, but the, the way the way that they introduce each character um, is fascinating. Yes. I mean, I think, you know, especially the Treasure Island characters. For me, like part of once I understood what was going on there, like mm-hmm. the combination of the Treasure Island characters and actual historical pirates for yes. me, for me personally, that's pretty much magic. Like the, the I love historical fiction. Yeah, I love fiction. Me too. Fiction, big fan. I mm-hmm. love you know imagining a world before the world that we know in stories that we know. Yes, and so the combination of all of those together already was so promising. It turns mm-hmm. out to be way better than I ever imagined. Um, but I love that. <laughs> from the first minute and flint i just uh yeah his entrance is pretty pretty dramatic and you already see right like you said that he's not in a powerful position yeah which really surprised me because i thought I, again going into it i was thinking swashbuckling michael bay badass pirate just like kicking ass and taking names in the high seas and to see someone who's in such a precarious position and then to see the full character arc that we get in 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 Flint in that and what we have three seasons now we're waiting for seasons for season 4 as we start this recording um i was just i i can't tell you how surprised i was by what this show turned into it is not at all what i thought it would be going into it and i don't think it's what most people expect no i i, I completely agree it definitely was not even remotely what i expected Mm-mm. and i think you know, you and I have brought a lot of our friends into watching it. And even so, like, I feel like even though we've kind of given hints of what it's about, every single person's reaction is, wow, this is nothing like what I thought it would be. And it's so much better than what I thought. So give me your your pitch. Why why should people watch Black Sails? Well, all I can say is what appeals to me about Black Sails. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. What I love more than anything is a story where characters develop and bring me with them like where where I can feel what they feel even if they're not the kind of people I would want to know in the real world (laughs) which I could say (laughs) yeah these are not necessarily people I would want to spend time with right right for sure (laughs) some of them yes I would love to hang out with Jack Rackham (laughs) (laughs) yeah pretty much every day um but but you're so drawn into their reality and to what the stresses are that Mm -hmm. help them develop and how they overcome them and how they deal with them. And the relationships of Mm -hmm. the people with each other are so strong and interesting and constantly changing. And you can see how the relationships of the people and the situations affect each character. And so what they go through and how they change is so believable. It is absolutely a character study. And again, I was not expecting that at all. But even going away from that, because since you mentioned it and since we've touched on that already, it's beautiful too to watch. I am stunned time and time again by the cinematography of the show. The actually, how many ships do they build for this show? I don't actually know. I think it's know. three. If, if I read it right, they actually built three ships. Now, I don't know if it's like absolute, you know, seaworthy vessels, but as far as like when they're on um, as their sets, th- there are three of them and then they do the CGI as well. Right. But there have been a couple of scenes that are just breathtaking. And I think specifically there's a great storm scene where they're heading into a storm that is just gorgeous to watch. Uh, you mentioned the music. Bear McCreary is extraordinary also. there's I, I mean, I can't think of anything that the show doesn't have going for it, except with maybe the caveat that that season one is not as strong, I don't believe, as, as two and three. And I think that you're right. It's because Stars was trying something new and they're trying to ease into it. I'm really glad that that once the showrunners got their green light and realized that they were doing well, that they just started to dig in and tell that story that they wanted to tell. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, definitely season one is not quite the story that it was. Although the thing that I realized when I started rewatching it is that season one 
is really a part of it. Like it's not. You're absolutely right. It's not as much. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it exactly. Like not quite the level of quality that I was. Is it the awkward teenager of black sales <laughs> as it grows into manhood? <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> Totally, it. I it think is it might awkward, be that. It is the awkward you do, teenager. You see what it's going to right, become, right? And when you, and especially like when you go back and you rewatch, the rewatch value is incredibly high, really higher. I mean, I'm enjoying season one much more going back through it than I did the first time because I, I really do think that had I not had so many people telling me stick with this and and watch this thing that i i i don't know that it would have gotten through episode or just one me or just you <laughs> yeah well again i didn't need a whole lot of nudging because i had already been really excited about it in general and i had wanted to try it before but it's it does start out what, what did i say the other day where it was like um oh goodness crass yeah. and bombast and but in that you said it was something like the most beautiful narrative told in crass and bombast way or something yeah, like that which i love along those That's lines so perfect. yeah and, and it's it's very true that that season one is um crass a little yeah, bit it's yeah, got those it's elements abrasive maybe yeah it's uh it's trying maybe a little bit harder in that kind of just like larger than life way than maybe two and three but Again, when, once you go back to it, you see how much they laid the groundwork for what they were going to do. Absolutely. I really, the first time I rewatched season one, which was not actually now, but a few months ago, the first time I wow. rewatched season one, my, my first reaction was, I can't believe how much every single, like that was after, yeah. after having seen season three. Yes. So I kind of had gotten that far through the storyline, and then I went back to season one and seeing how much of the framework for even the things at the end of season three, mm -hmm. which are spectacular, yes, was already even in the first episode. Yeah, and that Gosh. that really blew me away. Like, because it was kind of easy after the first watch of season one to kind of uh -huh. say, okay, fine, you know, they were they were still figuring out what they wanted to do and mm -hmm. all of that. But when you look back at season one, and that's why I've actually been encouraging people to, if they have time, yes, um, watch the whole series through the three seasons that we have so far, mm -hmm. and then come back and watch with us, yes. with the podcast, because yes. watching the first few episodes are whatever they are. You're going to have the experience you have when you see them the first time, but when you go back to them after getting through the whole three seasons the first episode even is so meaningful because yes. you see all the stuff and who the contrast to what people become uh -huh. the seeds of the process of watching them become what they're going to become just all of the themes every single important theme of the show yeah starts in the first episode you're right it's it, and and i remember thinking when i watched um season 1 uh, and, and episode 1 that, like I said, I thought it was an odd place to start, especially seeing Flint in such a weak spot. It seemed weird to me. And yet like perfect. You, and yet perfect. Yeah. <laughs> now, that, yeah. now that you know. <laughs> now, going back, yeah, I absolutely see how, of course, this is where his story starts. And, of course, when, when we, we see um, things from years ago, particularly in season two, we start to get flashbacks. And, of course, we had to have season one first. Yeah. Like, we had to have all of this... And it, and I don't think that there was another way to tell the story without going back and flashback. It's much more powerfully done this way. It's so powerful, especially yeah. for his character. There are a few characters that, that the way they chose to tell the story was so meticulous from the first moment yeah. and the, and the experience of it as they tell it is so strong. Yes. And, and, I, and I would argue also that there are characters where it did them a disservice and uh, I mean, there's one character in particular that I know that as we go in, uh, we'll get to talk about that I did not like until mid season three. And now going back and watching, I'm seeing now oh, okay. that, no, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm seeing, right. okay, again, the groundwork was always laid. It was always it was. there, but there was just all of this other, uh, the spectacle and the bombast and the, yep. again, just absolutely. I hate to keep using the word crass, but it's what comes to mind because it, well, it pulls me out of the show sometimes. I can see that. And it's not like the other, I mean, we are talking about pirates in, yeah. the, in the 1700s. So, you know, it's not like they suddenly become like 
<laughs> we refined and not right. crass. Yeah, that's that's but, a good point. But no, but I think as the show progresses, the choices they make about that become more about character or that you love the character so much that you kind of understand where they're coming from more. I'm not sure yeah. which it is. I'm not that's I'm not sure which is creating which situation there. But you learn to love them for who they are. Yeah. Um, some of them more than others. Some of them you hate for who they are. Right. But um, but the the things they do and the way they are after you've you've gone through these struggles with them and these character developments that they have, you understand them better. Mm-hmm. So like suddenly, you know, they're probably not that much less crass, but yeah, but you yeah. understand where they're coming from. So right. So it's much easier to understand. And some of them are actually like sometimes the crass that you're seeing in the beginning is actually an act that they're putting on that you understand uh-huh. afterwards. Yes. Once you yes. learn more about them, you understand what act they were putting on yeah. specifically. And that, that That's goes to one point. of the themes that I think is really important in the show is, is how, well, storytelling, first of all, storytelling is really, really, really important in the show. That's a really good point. They, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They present, you know, the ability to tell a good story is the ability to move people mm-hmm. and change minds and influence yes. people. And part of storytelling is, and again, I have a lot of notes about talking about this in episode one. Uh huh. Um, a lot of storytelling for pirates was about the the image that they could project. That a lot yeah, of their success absolutely. as pirates was making about, sure that their reputation preceded them. Exactly. Uh-huh. So that already is all about storytelling. The story that is told about a pirate is the story that will help them in their duties as pirates of taking other ships and such. No one would surrender to the dread pirate Wesley. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally true. hear you. So true. <laughs> and so I think that some of what you experience just as crass in the very beginning is actually part of that. Part of that, That's a good that point. creation of mythical self that they're doing. Mm, uh-huh. That's a really good point. That's going to help me, I think, get through some of the trickier portions that I had. They're, yeah, I mean, they are. And it's again, it's just, yeah, I'm looking forward because I've already, I'm in the, my third, sometimes fourth viewing of some of these episodes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing for you now mm-hmm. how your second viewing of some of these episodes are, especially in the first season yeah. where where it is a little harder for people until you know the characters. I really yes. believe deeply that once you know these characters the first season is a drastically different experience yeah well and that's one thing that that we're going to try to do um on this podcast is make sure that while you have seen these episodes so many times and you're going to be our one who's really done uh so many of the rewatches and who's looking into these interviews with the creators and with the writers of the show and i'm going to try to stay more of an audience surrogate for the first time viewer so which is really hard for me because <laughs> i want to keep watching all these shows over and over again like as soon as it was done i said i'm ready to start episode one over i'm, I'm ready to just recycle the whole thing and start again i don't even want to watch another show this is all, this is all i want to do but i do think that it's important because I mean, things just change so much and uh, the, your esteem for characters change uh, changes so much as you watch the show that in order to try and have the conversation about who these people are now and what it's like to first be introduced to them is going to be tricky enough as it is without having um, all of this additional information about who these characters become, uh, about where they end up. I'm willing to be the person burdened with all of the information. <laughs> And, That's good. And figuring out how to talk about each episode without spoiling every other episode. For for me, it, right. it's like all one unit at this point, which is really awesome for my own experience of yeah. it. But will be um, an interesting challenge for figuring out how to talk about it. I'm yeah. working on that. But yeah, I really, um, I really want to, for the podcast rewatch the episodes and exist just in the episode that I'm watching Great. and try to try to forget to some extent the other stuff while at the same time subtly bringing up like there there are a few themes that I think that would be really fun and not hard you know not not diminish the experience yes. of the watching to 
to watch from the very beginning. Um, one of the things I really want people to keep an eye out, uh -huh. mostly selfishly, because I've been trying to unlock the mystery of Randall. So there's a character named Randall, name everyone. I want everyone to watch him and tell me what you think of him, because it is unclear what's Randall. going on with now him. Now I'm trying to even remember who Randall <laughs> is. Randall, Randall used to be... Oh, the, yeah, yeah, I do know. Okay, right. okay. So he yeah. used to be the bosun. Yes. And then he had an accident, and you're introduced to him pretty quickly mm -hmm. in the first episode, and then there's some questions about him. Yeah. And I'm going to just say that and leave it at that. And I really would love to hear everyone's feedback about different ideas about what's going on with him because I think he's huh. worth watching. Um, and it's they're right. There are different. There are two different ways that his that his storyline could be happening. Right. And Silver has a lot of theories about him, and I'm just curious where huh. where we all okay. where we all lie on the Randall question. Okay. Um, so there's that. I'm just requesting that everyone think about that for me. And I don't <laughs> think that's spoiling anything. That'll just be a fun game right. for everyone to play. And we will try to keep um, our each episode spoiler-free as much as we can. However, I do think there will be certain times where we have to at least talk just a little bit about how something ha has foreshadowed something to come in the present. So watch it first and then don't let us spoil for you. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think that, that the writers went through um, a lot of work. They made a lot of very specific decisions. And uh, yeah, I just think that it shows them the, the honor and respect that they're due for this project that they made for us to try and, and uh, ingest it the way that they designed it. And it's, because it was absolutely crafted and designed. Absolutely. From the, from the first moment, despite the crassness, yeah. to, yeah. the, to You're absolutely the right. moment that we've seen up until now, it is so beautifully put together. Yes. And, I, and it challenges um, first impressions. It really does. And I think that's that's part of, of what they were doing. I know that uh, I, I say with, with no, um, I don't say it to be dramatic just because it's fact that this show has really fundamentally changed the way I think about people and human nature. And that's a huge accomplishment. And it's, I mean, I, I wouldn't trade it. I, I wouldn't go back and have it any other way because had I known what I, what is divulged, you know, from the beginning and going forward, I, my own uh, prejudices would have come up and blocked what I suppose the, the catharsis and the emotional impact that, that I got when those moments were delivered on screen, I would have lost that because I had prepared myself for them either or against them. That's so great. That makes me super happy. <laughs> it's it's weird. And I, I, was, I said the other day uh, on one of our other podcasts on Odd Man Out, I mentioned how pop culture is important because pop culture is culture and it does change and color the way that you look at things and the way that you filter things, uh, whether you know it or not. And we all like to think, you know, well, just because I see it on TV doesn't mean that's the way that I think. But it, it does color your perception of things and, and your environment and um, what you take in and what you consume is going to change the way that you think about things and the way that you form your um, your arguments and, and your value systems. And this was a show that made me question where I had come up with these ideas. You know, who who decides what is civilized and what is barbaric and what is honorable and what is shameful like who makes those decisions and what happens when an entire society says no <laughs> how about we make a new rule yeah it's just it's fascinating yeah it is it's it is a show that in addition to being amazing characters and amazing story what always will make me love a show beyond that mm -hmm. is larger philosophical questions yes. which this show really addresses Gosh, but not in a way like there are shows that cover philosophical questions in a way that's really preachy or boring yes. or or you know feeling like it's really just about that yeah in, or heavy-handed exactly yeah. in this case it all comes out through the story and yeah. through the character development and 
that's why you ask yourself the questions. It's not asking you the questions. You end up yes. asking yourself the questions because what a great you point. are empathizing with these characters who are going through all of these questionable things and yes. coming to whatever answers they come to. And maybe you agree mm-hmm. with them and maybe you don't. But you're going through it through character, not yeah. through some sort of heavy handed outside questioning. Absolutely. Um, and it makes it so much more. The, the one descriptive word I keep coming back to when people ask me about the show is that it's just it's the most human show I've ever seen. Like it's it's just it's got I, what was the thing that I said? Like it's got its finger on the pulse of what it means to be human and just stuck here in a very broken society trying to deal with other messed up people who are all just trying to find their truth and what is right and what is just. There's a lot to talk about. We've got uh, three seasons ahead of us before season four shows up in January. We could really get excited about seeing something brand new. And we're hearing excellent things about all of those who are on the production side of that, that it's something to really look forward to. And boy, are we ever... And every season, I haven't even been able to imagine the places they're going to take us. And then they take us those places. And then I realize at the end that that was all part of the same story. And I cannot wait to see what they bring us in season four. Completely agree with you. Fathoms Deep is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash commonroomradio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag FathomsDeep and follow us on Twitter at Black Salescast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening.